All right. So I've been known to lurk in the comment sections of all of the videos I've been a part of. Every now and then I reply to one or two. On the video for the cover J Music did of Technopathetic for Siva Gunner's channel on December 2019, a lot of people got behind the idea of seeing a video about what it took to make it. So here I am. I am a little late to the draw, but better late than never, right? But before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, let me just catch everyone up to speed. For those of you that don't know who I am, hi, uh, my name is Chris Williams. I'm a musician and content creator based in New Jersey and New York City. I lead my own band called Chris Williams and the Redline Arsenal, which you should check out, but I'm mostly known for being a part of the J Music Ensemble as the synth player and as one of its chief arrangers alongside the band leader, Patrick Bartley. The J Music Ensemble, or J Music for short, is an eight piece band dedicated to making covers of songs written by Japanese composers. We're mostly known for our covers having a jazz oriented twist to them. Our most famous covers are covers of songs from the Japanese role playing game Persona 5. You can hear most of them on our latest album, Metagroove, which you can buy and stream right now. We've mostly done stuff on our own, but every now and then we collaborate with other figureheads in the video game music cover scene. One of those collaborations was with the Siva Gunner team to bring you our version of Technopathetic, arranged by yours truly. Siva Gunner is a- Hold it! Chris the editor here. The Chris before you is about to botch the explanation of who Siva Gunner is, and I just can't let that slide. So allow me to tag myself in here to give y'all the real scoop. Siva Gunner is a parody of the channels Silva Gunner and Gilva Sunner. These channels were two separate entities that uploaded songs from video games onto their YouTube channels, but ultimately got shuttered due to copyright infringement claims. The running joke with Siva Gunner, which is spelt with an uppercase I and not a lowercase L, is that they only upload high quality rips that bait and switch viewers. All right, other me, do you want to take it from here? You see, a rip in the context of video game music normally refers to an unmodified song or audio file that's extracted directly from the video game's program files. So whenever you go onto a YouTube channel that only uploads high quality rips, you get excited to listen to your favorite VGM. But whenever you click on one of the videos, you'll find out that it's either remixed or mashed up with other songs, memes, or both. All right, we're good, continue. Now let's circle back to Technopathetic real quick. Technopathetic is a song from the action game Jet Set Radio Future, or JSRF for short. The game boasts a slew of absolute bangers composed by King Daddy Chungus and Meme Lord Supreme Hideki Naganuma, and J Music did a cover of Technopathetic for Siva Gunner's King for Another Day channel event. King for Another Day was an event hosted on Siva Gunner's channel as a means of sharing curated original content from a large group of creators and it came in the form of a tournament. Each piece of music was a high quality rip associated with a character. These characters battled it out in an elimination bracket. After that character's high quality rips for that round got uploaded, the fan base voted for the character they thought had the best uploads. The winner would advance while the other got eliminated. J Music's version of Technopathetic is a high quality rip associated with DJ Professor K, the guiding light and resident DJ of the underground pirate radio station Jet Set Radio where the game gets its name. So now that the who, the what, and the where has been established, let me get into how J Music linked up with Siva Gunner and why I chose to arrange Technopathetic. The song had been a bit of an inside joke between Patrick and I. Whenever I first introduced the song to him in 2015, when the band just started out, we both agreed that the way that one of us would arrange the tune would lend itself to some serious jazz. In addition to all of that, we were playing a lot of arrangements that tried to stay as faithful to the original recordings as possible. We were all playing what was on the sheet music, or as we like to say, we read the ink. A lot of our buzz came from our covers of the J-pop trio Perfume and the Vocaloid producer Sasakure.uk that were styled in this manner. The joke here was that no one that knew the band knew that we extensively studied jazz. No one knew what else we could do. And if the next thing we did was our arrangement of Technopathetic, anyone's perception of the band would be aggressively yeeted out of the window. They didn't know the full extent of our power. Now, was the next era of the band heralded in with Technopathetic? Obviously not. But people started gaining a new impression of us whenever we started uploading Persona 5 covers in 2018. 
we started releasing videos of our first run throughs of these arrangements that tapped deeper into the skills we developed as jazz musicians. And while those videos were gaining traction and while we were in the middle of making more, we received a Twitter DM from the Siva Gunner team that invited us to contribute to the tournament. After we said yes, the team sent us this huge spreadsheet full of contenders for the tournament and the theme behind every character's associated high quality rips. So whenever Patrick and I were looking at the spreadsheet together, I spotted DJ Professor K as a competitor. I looked at Patrick, he looked back at me, I looked at him, and then he looked at me, and then I was like, you know what I'm arranging, right? And then the rest is history. Also, here's some more J Music lore for you. I was also slated to arrange Road Taken from Fire Emblem Fates for Nintendo Power, but I shelved that idea at the literal last minute. Needless to say, the opportunity to arrange and record Technopathetic felt like a long time coming. And though we were excited to cover Technopathetic for as long as we've known the tune, there was no way we could have done it earlier than the Siva Gunner event. The only way we could pull that off was with the privileges and resources that we had available to us at the time we received the invite. And now that the stage is finally set, buckle up. Let's talk processes. Now, when you steal your resolve to arrange a song like Technopathetic, you'll have to deal with a couple of things. The first one is having to make creative decisions about the inclusion and exclusion of elements in the original recording vis-a-vis -vis the instrumentation of the band you're arranging for. Pat was on alto and had his effects pedals on deck. Matt and I play keyboards with a lot of synth preset options provided by Nord Libraries and VST Sound Banks. I normally stick to keys when I play with J Music, but I also play trumpet and have a trigger pad at my disposal. Joe has an electric guitar and a pedal board, Brad has his basses and a pedal board, and Norman had his drums alongside a possible trigger pad. Thankfully, a lot of roles behind the arrangement set themselves in a place, which in turn presented no problems. Patrick would handle imitating certain vocal samples with a harmony pedal, I would manipulate my synth options to make a vocoder for the lead vocals, and the rest of the rhythm section would just do their thing with Matt switching back and forth between synth presets. It was interesting this time around because with the arranging formula that Pat had established for the band, Matt usually sticks to one keyboard sound and comps. I'm the one handling all of the other synth patterns and counter melodies, which means I'm normally the one switching back and forth. But since I'm handling the vocoder and Technopathetic is a pattern driven song with multiple synths that comp, Matt kind of ticks on my role, which I think is pretty cool. For those of you that don't know what comping means in this context, comping refers to the action of playing or making up parts that accompany or complement improvised solos or melodic lines. Whenever Patrick or Max take a solo in a J Music acoustic video, Norman, Ben, and Wallace are comping behind them. Anyway, because of your creative decisions, you're gonna come across the other thing that is on this list of things that you have to deal with. You'll have to come up with ways to compensate for what's missing, even if it initially seems impossible. We'll come back to this step later because there's an element in the song that I want to talk about that really embodies this concept, but I want to talk about other elements first. Now, when it comes to the cover, the most pertinent thing I can talk about would be the vocoder. So if you listen to either the original recording or J Music's version, you might notice that the vocals sound a little bit more robotic than human. That's because after a human sang the recorded vocals, whoever was handling post-production changed the way it sounded using a machine. When it comes to combining the human voice with technology, you essentially have three options. Vocoders, talk boxes, and auto-tuning. Each vehicle has their own unique timbre to them, and using that knowledge, I guess that the vocals were most likely tweaked with using a vocoder. A vocoder is a sound effect unit that electronically modifies the sound of a synthesizer by using the human voice, usually via a mic input. It's often confused with talk boxes, but don't do that. Vocoders use two sources, the carrier input and the modulator input, the synth preset and the human voice respectively. Think about it like this. Whenever you talk, the air getting carried out of your body is getting modulated by your vocal cords, your tongue, and your teeth. Without these, you wouldn't be able to speak. When you apply this way of thinking to the way a vocoder works, the synthesizer is like the air and the human voice itself is all of the things in your throat and your mouth that allow you to manipulate that air to talk. The modulator can't work if nothing's carried to it. To make the vocoder work, you press a key on the synthesizer and speak at the same time. When you do, it might sound something like this. Standing there looking shy when you know I'm the reason why. The vocoder sound changes every time you load a new preset. 
Fiddling with synth presets and their parameters are how I came up with the two vocoder sounds in Technopathetic. And now that I have the vocoder covered, I guess the next question would be, what in the hell are the lyrics? Figuring that out was harder than I expected. The vocals came from a weird sounding sample, so everyone has their own ideas about what words are getting sung. But thankfully, Naganuma-san himself tweeted a picture of the lyrics to the song. But the more that I studied the recording, I found a problem. The lyrics didn't line up with Naganuma-san's photo to me, so I wondered if Naganuma-san could have possibly misinterpreted the lyrics of the sample. To make sure he didn't, I would have to cross-reference the lyrics that he posted with the original unaltered sample. The problem with that idea was that all of the things that Naganuma-san used to make the songs from the Jet Set Radio franchise has always been a mystery to the cult, I mean, fan base, for a while. All that hype simmered down for me when I remembered reading somewhere that all of the samples that Naganuma-san used came from a royalty-free sound library that Sega issued to him while he was working there. That led to the harrowing thought of having to dive deep into the depths of the royalty-free one-shot sector of the internet to find the sample. But a knight in shining armor appeared before me. Whosample.com Whosample.com is a website that catalogs information about sampled music. And not only did it have info on Technopathetic, it came with a link to a source. So I cross-referenced Naganuma-san's picture with that to bring you the lyrics that you hear in the J Music cover. Okay, now we tackle the biggest gun of them all. Remember what I said about creative decisions and compensation? This is where it all comes full circle. The Breakdown. This breakdown posed so many problems because the sub bass and the Acid 303-ish thing were just logistically difficult. I couldn't delegate them to other instruments. It's too much of a tonal shift for the bass even with his effects pedals and not to mention that some of the notes are out of the bass's range to begin with. Matt can't play both lines like that at the same time on his keyboard and I couldn't give the Acid 303-ish thing to Joe either. Yet, I couldn't just leave it out because it's an important part to the song's building climax. The only option that I saw was transcribing that breakdown element by element and making my own sequence loop. But with that, another problem arose. How are we going to get it to play in the right spot? In an environment where everything is recorded live as it happens, someone would have to be triggering that sample somehow. We would be recording to a click track, but the entire take and vibe would be ruined if that sample didn't trigger exactly on beat. So trigger pads were out of the question. The band debated about how it would sound if we just played without it and threw the sample in post later. But I was against this because that sample would dictate how we would play that section in a major way. You see, jazz players listen to each other and respond to everyone. Patrick, while he's soloing, might decide to go wah ba ba loo bop, and Matt and Norman could respond to Patrick by going a wah bam boom. So if we jam without that sequenced loop happening, we could all sound in sync with each other, but the loop would just feel out of place because we weren't listening to it and letting it inform our way of playing as we recorded. In hindsight, I could have done a better job trying to explain that at the rehearsal before the session. The fact that my brain and my mouth operate at different speeds did not benefit me there, but then again, when does it ever? But I digress. We ended up importing the sample into the Pro Tools session in a way that it would come in exactly where we need it as we were recording takes. That eliminated the need for a godlike sense of rhythm and sated the concern behind having to play without it and fixing it in post later. Of course, we'd be screwed if we were to try and do this live. The reason why we needed a pre-rendered sample for the recording session applies here as well. And in terms of triggering the sample, it would always be a 50-50 situation that we'd never truly be able to nail. And above all that probably lie the most significant problems. Our band leader at the time of recording this video is living in Japan and I can't play keys and sing at the same time. So if you're wanting to see Jay Music perform Technopathetic live, then you'll be waiting for a pretty long time. But anyway, that, my friends, is how Technopathetic came to be. If you like what you saw, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and click the bell to the right of it to be notified of every upload. Also, if you have any more questions about the arrangement, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I'll try to get to as many of them as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, you can help me make them by visiting my Patreon page. 
With your pledge, you can grab the score to Technopathetic as well as a newly remixed version of the arrangement as complimentary goodies. And if you want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter or join my Discord server. I also do a lot more than just these videos. There are Twitch streams, music releases, IRL concerts, curated playlists. The link to everything is in the description box below. Thanks so much for sticking through all of this. And until next time, drink water and stay dope.